this is the story as far as we know it. The Var are the oldest known race in Rayclast, almost completely forgotten in modern times. They built the Var ruins that entombed the weird darkness. They built the ancient pyramid, and presumably they also built the Val Oversoul, or at least its mechanical frame. A number of the monsters in the Val created areas are called constructs, so presumably they had some biological or thaumaturgical technology. Although the Val civilization was peaceful, they practiced human sacrifice. The Val were also the first to use virtue gems. Ikeus Perantus claims that the Val were even more steeped in gem culture than our Emperor and his gamblings. It's an obsession as old as civilization itself. Siosa's translation of the first golden page also mentions that the Val gathered their virtue gems at Dorianus' cradle to ensure the Val civilization's future. The nature and purpose of this cradle is uncertain. Given the fact that Eremir claims it was the Val that began the use of virtue gems and the fact that Siosa claims that gem culture is as old as civilization itself, one may assume that the Val were the very first civilization. The Val pyramid below the mantle of Sarn is rumored to be 2000 years old. That number approximately matches how long ago we think the Val civilization ended. Although the figure 2000 might refer to other things like the age of the Val civilization when it ended, or how long the Val expected their pyramid to shelter and protect its contents. Atsiri and Doriani The last queen of the Val was named Atsiri, who owned fabulous treasure. She sacrificed all those who opposed her, as Siosa's translation of the second golden page mentions that she drenches her altars with the blood of those deranged enough to question her vision. She appears to have been the patron of Doriani, a thermoturgist similar to Chichu's patronage of Malachi. It is said that she wished to see her likeness reflected in the still waters of history, indicating a vain personality. Siosa mentions that Doriani was a man of divine talent and demented ambition. Comparing him to Malachi, he presumably was a Val thermoturgist of sorts giving the comparison to Malachi. The End of Val Civilization The Val Civilization seems to have ended as a result of an internal event rather than external conquest. This event may be the mysterious communion that Baal was seeking before their demise, according to Ikius Perandus, as is written in one of the Golden Pages. A communion, but with what, by all accounts, it wasn't God that the Val were trying to reach. Said communion took place during the Harvest Moon, and Doriani was the heart of this event. Both Atsiri and Doriani died in the Cataclysm, as did many others. Some people also changed. On the golden page that mentioned this, the words sleep, nightmare and beast are also mentioned, and that the Val have failed themselves. This may be a reference to the Val Oversoul, which is also called nightmare in game by some of the classes. So I also believe the end of Val civilization must have been very similar to the fall of Sarn. Patching this information together, it may be that the Val were expecting to save their civilization at a so-called communion which was possibly related to Doriani's cradle of virtue gems, and that this communion caused the cataclysm. The Eternal Empire The Eternal Empire was founded by a race called Atsmiri. We don't know exactly when the empire was founded, but the Atsmiri civilization began before the Val civilization fell. At some point in the empire's history, there was a thaumaturgist named Maligaru, his equipment and laboratory is found in the Chamber of Sins, whose architecture resembles Lunaris Temple in Sarn. Maligar's research centered on virtue gems and how their qualities might be transferred to humans. His main technique was to inject the essence of a gem via a device called Maligar's Spike, although it never seemed to work terribly well. Apart from the spike, Maligar created elementals and a mysterious darkness that covered the land. At the end of his life he created the Baleful Gem, either a synthetic virtue gem or a corrupted one, for an unknown purpose. The Peak We don't know how much land the Empire covered before its sudden demise, but we do know it was divided at least into the Outer Empire, 
the southern coast from the Prisoner's Gate down past Lion Eyes Watch, and the Inner Empire, everything north and inland of Prisoner's Gate. The Empire capital at the time was Sarn, and despite the centuries of neglect, the remaining architecture suggests the Empire was fairly prosperous. The Emperor at the time was Chitus, although we don't know much about him beyond his ignorance of the forces that would destroy him, while the Empire's citizens were Tsmiri, the slaves were of other races, including Isumites, Marraketh, and Karuri. It seems these other races were not native to Rayclast, or at least not the part of Rayclast covered by the Empire, but were separate contemporary civilizations. At the time, the leading thaumaturgist was Milakai. Like Maligaru, he experimented with virtue gems, but unlike Maligaru, he just surgically implanted them into his test subjects. And his efforts met with far more success than Maligaru's. Malachi had slaves mining virtue gems and thaumatic sulfide, and a supply of test subjects from the Emperor. The results of this surgical process were known as gemlings. Emperor Chitus said, These glorious gems have brought us within spitting distance of godhood, and the Empire's defenses included at least one gemling legion. Malachi's most famous creation, however, was known as the Gemling Queen. She was originally a favorite of Emperor Chitus, named Diala, but annoyed him, and was given to Malachi to experiment on. She fell in love with him, and he reshaped her into a most impressive gemlin. Meanwhile, outside the Imperial Court and former Turgist's laboratory, discontent grew. A movement named the Purity Rebellion led by the unlikely combination of High Templar Wall of Thebrus and Victario, the People's Poet, aimed to overthrow Emperor Chichus and destroy the Thaumaturgists and the Gemlins. While Wall and Victario raised support among the common citizens of the Empire, they also sought support from outside it. Wall enlisted the support of King Kaum of the Karui, and Victoria sought the aid of the Isomites. Although we do not exactly know how, it seems very likely that the Marraketh were also involved. The Rebellion When the time of Purity Rebellion arrived, the conspirators took action. Vol's forces worked outside the city, possibly fending off potential reinforcements, while inside San Victorio incited the populace to riot. But it seems Chitus was assassinated by somebody named Ondar, who fled while the rebellion was still in progress. Meanwhile, in the Outer Empire, King Karum and the Karui warhost landed on the terraces and attacked the first line of the Empire's defense. The Eternal Legion stationed at Lionai's watch. Marcus Lionai's troops were gemlings, and Lionai may well have been a gemling himself, but Karum defeated him and began advancing up the coast. The Empire's second line of defense was a thaumaturgist named Sharon from a group of people or a location known as Umbra. When she realized Lion Eye would fall to Karum, Sharon raced to the next defensible structure of the coast, Axiom Prison. She tricked or convinced the Warden Brutus into allowing her to make him into a superhuman monster capable of defeating the Karui. Brutus was never defeated by the Karui, although we don't know if they ever bothered attacking Axiom Prison. Although Karui carvings are found beyond Axiom Prison in the coast, they might not have traveled there via Axiom, since the Karui possessed Kano technology, they may just have traveled by sea of the coast. Sharon erected a thermaturgical barrier as a third line of defense against the Karui, in the pass between Prisoner's Gate and the Western Forest. Whether they tried to break through it and failed, or whether they never bothered trying, the Karui ceased to advance when they reached Siren's Song Cove. The Fall Afterwards, High Templar Vol became Emperor of the Empire, his rebellion had shattered. We don't know whether the rebellion itself faintly wounded the Empire or just injured it. But under Vol's leadership, it declined rapidly. Despite the decline of the Empire after the rebellion, it was finally killed by a separate event called the Cataclysm. This Cataclysm could not have been the rebellion for several reasons. One. Eremia says the Atsmiri's history and identity was destroyed by the Cataclysm, 
but the empire was still standing after the rebellion, and it seems unlikely the Atsmiri could have forgotten their identity while the empire was still normally alive. 2. The Karui participated in the rebellion and after they took control of the southern coast, they settled there it quite heavily. It wasn't until later that the Karui recorded black storms descend on us from the north, and later still, the earth of Rayclast rejects the dead. The Karui settlement must have occurred between the rebellion and the events that cursed Rayclast. Very little is known about exactly what happened. As Clarissa points out, no news of the Empire reached Oriath until after the Cataclysm was over and its effects drove the Karui out of Rayclast. So what was this Cataclysm that finally put an end to the Empire and presumably cursed the Gemlings and raised the dead? Hargan says, Vols was the shortest reign of any internal emperor, about five years. The twist saw to that. The only other mention to the twist is when Lady Diella says, the cockroaches will come again, they want the twist. Apparently the twist is a device or artifact and it exists somewhere in Solaris Temple under the protection of Lady Diella. It's possible that Lady Diella picked the twist out of the wreckage of Sarn years after the cataclysm occurred and moved it into her sanctuary in Solaris Temple for safekeeping, but there are also reasons to suspect that she was directly involved in the cataclysm itself. 1. The Gemling Queen is the only Gemling known to have escaped becoming undying. 2. At one point Gregor says, Then they'll have the Gemling Queen, a living embodiment of the cataclysm. 3. Lady Diala herself implies that at one point she had to choose between the Empire's survival and her own. Malachi begged for him, for the Empire. I chose me. Selfish me. The Empire died and I live. I live and live and live and live. This raises further questions. Lady Diala says of Malachi, he gave me gems, divine jewels for his gemling queen and describes her spine as a pretty spine, bejeweled and bountiful. Since this is Malachi we are talking about, these are presumably virtue gems rather than mere jewelry. Most gemlings seem to have received only a single gem, and yet from context Lady Diella received many, so Malachi must have intended her for some purpose greater than the average gemling. If this did indeed occur after the purity rebellion with the Empire in disarray, Perhaps he intended to use her to restore the Empire much as Siron intended Brutus to defend it. Orath Orath is a small island off the southeast coast of Reckless. We don't know when Orath was first colonized, but it seems to have been well established and prosperous at the time of the Empire's fall, so it must have been at least settled and under construction during the Empire's peak. In the Frisian forest in the Inner Empire is the Fell Shrine the ruins of an old Templar cathedral. So the Templars have a long-standing link to Rayclast, and obviously High Templar Vol had an interest in the Empire. Presumably people from the Empire colonized Oriath and brought their religion along, and were stranded when the Empire crumbled. The capital of Oriath is Theopolis, and contains at least historical archives, dueling arenas and the headquarters of the Ebony Legion. It also contains the Court of Divine Temperance, presided over by the High Templar, and many of the crimes the court prosecutes are things like Theosophical pride, public heresy, and resisting Templar authority. So it seems fairly likely that Arias is some kind of theocracy run by the Templars. Even the name Theopolis suggests religious devotion. Modern Times In the modern age, Brekla spares no civilization, just a few disorganized descendants of the Empire and undead. It also bears a number of people from Oriath. Some were shipwrecked, but many were exiled for crimes, minor or major. The current High Templar is a man named Dominus, who controls the Ebony Legion as well as the Templars. He recently acquired an interest in the history of the Empire. Dominus works in a laboratory at the top of the tower known as the Scepter of God. But his assistants General Bravicius and Piety gather information and resources. 
Garicius set up a temporary barracks in Sarn, near Lunaris Temple, and seems to be responsible for seeking out the artifact known as the Twist, and perhaps the Ribbon Spool. Piety was originally named Vinya and worked as a thaumaturgist and prostitute in Theopolis. Currently, she is more an archaeologist, roaming reckless, investigating works and techniques of the Empire's most famous thaumaturgists, including Sharon and Maligaro, as well as trying to reproduce their experimental results for herself. Like Malachi, she implants virtue gems surgically, although judging by the distriches in the lowest floor of Lunar's temple, she has not yet reached Malachi's level of skill.